Hello everyone, welcome back. As always, I hope you are doing absolutely fantastic in your life. So today in this video, we are going to talk about something called Markov decision process. With Markov decision process, we basically formalize sequential decision making process. In our previous videos, we didn't really talk about how we formalize reinforcement learning. So in this video, we focus on that. We formalize reinforcement learning problem with Markov decision process. So what are the components of Markov decision process? So there are five main components of Markov decision process in reinforcement learning the number one is agent the number two is the environment number three the state state of the environment number four is the actions number five is the reward so there are five components so let's talk about agent so agent is the main decision maker in the reinforcement learning or mark of decision process so it basically interacts with the environment it takes it takes an action in the environment looking into the current state or current situation of the environment and it applies that action and environment or the system moves to a different state. So and going from one state by taking a particular action it gets some reward from the environment. So state basically defines the entire situation or it encodes the entire information of the state at the particular moment. So here we actually should talk about something called Markov property and we use this in reinforcement learning. So Markov property is something uh, related to the states. So when a system has Markov property associated with the states, then we can say that uh, the state transition based on an action on the state depends only on the current state of the system and it doesn't depend on the entire state action reward trajectory that happened in the past. Are you getting my point? So if you are in a, if your agent in a particular state of the environment or state of the system, then if it takes an action then the state transition the the next state of the system will depend only on the current state and current action of the environment it will not depend on the previous actions and previous rewards or whatever happened in the past so it will depend only on the present scenario so this is the markov property and we'll use it in reinforcement learning now when we talk about markov decision process we mainly talk about finite markov decision process so in finite markov decision process we assume that states are finite so state has finite number of elements the state set the set of state has finite number of elements set of reward has finite number of elements and state of action has finite number of elements so let's take an example of chess game so in chess game the state we define the state as the current position of the pieces of the chess board pieces means pawns kings queens uh, rooks bishops all these elements and this state is actually markovian if you uh, Think about it carefully because if you're playing chess you don't have to think about what happened in the past you just have to worry about what is the current situation of the state board where are the uh, pieces and you can immediately take an action based on that current situation you don't need to worry about what happened in the past so this is markovian if you see uh, same in case of tic-tac-toe game now let's take an example of something which is not Markovian for example if you talk about share market so share market if you see you cannot exactly predict looking into the current state of the uh, share market or particular share of a particular company uh, if you see what if you think about what will be the share value it will, it will increase or decrease you cannot really predict it looking into the today's information you have to look into a sequence of events that happened in the past so in that case you cannot actually take the optimal decision based on the current state uh, you need additional information the sequence of events that happened uh, in relation to that company so this is this particular thing doesn't follow 
Markovian property and always remember Markovian property Markov property is associated with the state so if we define a state differently then we can make a system Markovian or non Markovian so this is this is the way we defined a reinforcement learning problem so in reinforcement learning problem what is the goal the agent has to take action in the environment where the states are Markovian that means it will just look into the current state of the system and it will take an action and the goal of the agent is to increase the total reward in the system so since it gets a reward once it applies an action at a particular state it moves to a different state and during this transition it gets a reward so it has to increase the total cumulative reward in the system so it doesn't worry about what is the next reward it doesn't care maximizing the next reward or immediate reward it has to care about the total reward of the entire trajectory the entire sequence of action state action reward sequence it has to worry about uh, what reward I am going to, what total reward I am going to have after end of the total episode or after end of a uh, fixed number of steps so sometimes it ha it might get a small reward in the next step but it can be a way to get more reward in the in the upcoming states so in the next video we are going to talk about mainly two algorithms to uh, solve this problem so solving these problems means finding a policy so what is a policy policy is a kind of function which defines what actions should be taken by the agent in a particular state so uh, we are going to find out that function so we want to optimize that function we want to optimize that function in such a way that the agent gets maximum reward maximum cumulative reward in the environment how we can do that so there is a very beautiful uh, algorithms to deal with that and in the next video onwards we are going to talk about dynamic programming and using dynamic programming actually we can solve this uh, sequential decision making problem we can find out the optimal policy for the agent uh, i will talk about something called policy iteration and value iteration these are two main algorithms uh, based on dynamic programming to solve a sequential decision making task or a reinforcement learning task so stay tuned for the next videos and hope you like this video and if you like it then give me a thumbs up and that will motivate me to make more interesting videos and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the bell icon so that you get notification when i upload new videos thank you bye bye